Second <laughs> Corinthians chapter six, where we'll be this morning. We'll also be in Isaiah chapter forty-nine uh, for just a little while, and probably in Colossians if you want to find those uh, uh, two. I believe it is. Uh, <clears throat> but anyhow. Uh, we do have our problems in life and God will help us in, in those things but Paul's telling the church of Corinth here and by the way it is good to see everybody good to be back this morning on a Sunday morning so he says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 so he, he tells them about how that uh, in the beginning of or the end of the life chapter he tells them how that he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be the righteous, to be made the righteousness of God in him. Then he goes on to tell the church, he said, we then as workers together with him. we got to be with him, not uh, running before him or any of those things, but be with him, that Christ in those things. But he said, we then as workers together with him beseech you, also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. What is the grace of God? God's unmerited love for us. Don't, don't receive it in vain. You know, not to we'll come short, run this race, and then come short at it. You know, so in those things. So we work in those. And in 1 Corinthians, I've got mine folded over here if you want to, uh, on it, 3 and 9, one verse here. He says, For we are laborers together with God. You're God's husbandry. You're God's building. You're, you're what He's built up. You're the house of the Lord. You're, you're whose house you are if you continue, you know, with joy unto the end, as in the book of Hebrews. So we're workers with Him together. Beseech you, receive not the grace of God in vain. For He hath said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. When? Well, who's the day? Jesus is the day. So now is the day of salvation. Now the day has appeared. The day star has appeared unto us. So now we can get into Christ and we can be that and be in the day of the Lord. And he said, now is that accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So turn with me, if you would, in, in the book of Isaiah. Hold that place just a minute. 49 and 8. In Isaiah 49 and 8, he said, Thus saith the Lord, in accepted time, in an accepted time have I heard thee, in a day of salvation have I helped thee. He wants to remind us that the prophet of old knew that time of salvation. So why should we not now know our time of visitation or our salvation? I have helped thee and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. That thou mayest say in the, to the prisoners, Go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastor shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall heat nor sun smite them, for they have mercy on them, shall lead them even by the springs of water, shall he guide them. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far and low, these from the north and from the west and from the uh, land of uh, Sinim. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. So we look and we can see that <clears throat> God has seen a time and he appointed a time. As he go back over here in 2 Corinthians, we, we look and said, I've heard thee in a time accepted. God has seen in all the times upon this earth. God has seen when we've been in trouble. And boy, we've been in trouble and we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Our people today are in desperate. Here at the end times of this old world, we're in desperate trouble. But God's still the same. He hasn't changed. And we should cry loud and spare not. We should tell our people unless we get Jesus Christ, we're not going to make it. Right. Who is it up to? It's to us this morning as the church. It's up to us to proclaim the Word of God. And who is that Word? Is, is Jesus. Is there salvation in any other name? We need to stand bold upon that. That is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. To tell the whole world 
who it is. He said, give no offense, though. When we're coming and we're witnessing and we're telling our people, what do we tell them? We tell them out of love that it's Jesus Christ. Why? Because God is love, and a man born of God is born of love. Because God is love. And we tell our people how to be saved, not to put people down or whatever, but to tell them the truth of what it is, how God has established it from the beginning, that it's His Word, that it's Jesus Christ. Give no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience. What did he tell us in Revelation? He said, By you patience, you saints, you possess you your souls. we got to be patient and wait upon the Lord. Our families are in trouble. <clears throat> our children are in trouble. Your children's in trouble. Your neighbors, our families, our friends, our enemies are in trouble. And listen today, what are we going to do? He said, by in all things proving, approving ourselves in the, as the ministers of God in much patience, there's going to be afflictions in the necessities and in distresses. Boy, this world's in distress. It's You can look at it as the old prophet said, this whole world, it would rock to and fro. Listen today, like a cottage upon stilts and like a drunkard. We're just here and there. We're moving. We don't know where to turn. Then it's up to us. Approving our ministries. That listen today that it's in Jesus Christ. Telling them what the answer to our problem is. That is Jesus Christ. In stripes, oh, will they come against you? They sure will. We've studied in our Bible studies in the last little while. We know that listen today that wickedness and evil and those things are going to come against the church. How that it persecuted the church and the remnant of her seed that bore the man child and all of those things that established the way that God wanted it to go. And so they'll be in stripes. Paul said many times he was in stripes. He was in prison. He was beaten and left for dead. But did he turn and revile against the people? No, he wanted to pray for them. He wanted to look and to say, hey, that God loved them just as he knew that he was lost and undone, that he was without God at one time. Even though he thought that he was doing what God wanted him to do, he still was not in the way of God, which is Jesus Christ. But he said in stripes and imprisonments and tumults, in labors, in watching and fasting and all that we do. We say we got to do all these. Yeah, we've got to separate and these fastings is separating ourselves from the things of the world. The things that the flesh wants to do and rather that is contrary to the word of God, we need to stay away from those things that God might be able to use us, that we might be able to get to people that he said in verse 6, by pureness, by knowledge. And listen, we need to have our knowledge increased. He said when we're out there getting these things and th this faith and that we have it increased by the word of God and the knowledge of God. But he said while we're out here getting knowledge and wisdom, let us not leave off understanding. He said by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, and the most important, by the Holy Ghost. That by the being led of those things, we can have the patience, we can have the long suffering, we can have all these things that's been set up here before. But let us make sure it's by the Holy Ghost, by the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. For those that be led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Then if we're sons of God, we're going to look to God, and if we lack the patience, we can ask God, help us with the patience. Help us with the long suffering when our people listen today and our families and our friends and those that we love so dear that it looks like that they're just completely away from God, don't want anything to do with God. Let us still pray and let God do the work. And God will do His perfect work if we'll carry out what God wants us to do in love and in fellowship with God. How can we tell somebody how to come into fellowship with God if we're not in fellowship with God ourselves? And listen today, he said to these things by the word of truth, by the power of God. Let me back up. By the Holy Ghost, by love and faith. Listen today, listen, that love of God's got to be pure love. 
It's got to be out of something that he tells us of this, that it's not fake. Let us let that sink in. That un unfeigned love of God, it's not fake. We, you can say, oh, how I love Jesus, and God knows whether you do or not. We can say we love one another, and God knows whether we do or not. That it's not a fake love. That Listen today, that we're willing brother, to have that love of God down in us, that, that love of God that what does not want anybody to perish. We can look at somebody, our enemy, and say, I don't care where they come to church or not. That's not unfeigned love. <coughs> it's fake. Because let me add, let me add this to something. What were we? What were we? We want we were Christ died while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So then what we look out here and all these people are doing certain things that we need to pray for them because the power of prayer changes things. We want God to move for us and to help our people and to help our world that's in turmoil in these last days, help pulling some people's feet out of the fire. What we're going to have to do is preach Jesus Christ. We're going to have to teach Jesus Christ we're going to have to live Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That He died for the sin of the whole world. Yeah, He died for you and I, but He died for the sin of the whole world. All right? By the word of truth. And what is truth? Jesus said, I am truth. I am the way. I am the truth. And then what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to tell of what He has done for this world that we move away from religion and get into salvation. Amen. That we get into learning about Jesus Christ, what He done for us, what He did for all those people of old that thought because nobody could get to God without Jesus Christ. That we tell the truth of the matter by the word of truth which is Jesus Christ, by the power of God as Paul told them there in the book of Romans, I believe about 1 and 16, somewhere there, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the power of God is salvation. This and this word of God that we tell about what he has done, and we cannot be ashamed of that word. No matter where we go, it's good enough that we can talk about Jesus Christ here. We can witness to one another. It's here. Encourage one another here. What about when it gets hard out there? When people say, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. What is the words that we're going to have? And he tells us that God said, don't worry about it. When they bring you before the magistrate, when you're out there, God will give us that, that, that word that we'll be able to to tell about Jesus Christ because we have something within us which is called the Holy Ghost and He will give us the words to say. If God wants them said, they'll come out. They'll be there. Now what does He want us to do? As Paul told young Timothy, he said, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. And he tells us to look into the scriptures and search the scriptures for in them that are they that do testify of him. These are they, they have eternal life. They're the ones when we look into his words and we find out how did people of old act? They acted just like us. They may have rode different uh, ways of getting to and fro. They may have lived in different styles of houses and different types of clothing. They may have combed their hair a little different in some way and had all different other kinds of tradition, but they're just like you and I. There's no different. And God has not changed. That salvation is only through and by God through Jesus Christ. That's the way it's always been. And brother, as John the Revelator saw Him, and when we can be able to see Him as that Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. When we can look and see that He established His body, which is the church, and brother, that she is glorious, she is white, and she is pure, and we'll be able to, it revelates our minds and our hearts to be able to look and to see what He wants us to see. How do we see we have our eyes of faith opened up to us? 
and we're able to look into his word and to be able to know by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. That is, he tells us in Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God that we can withstand these wiles of the devil, the things of the flesh of our own things that come against us of our own self. And then what about all the things there of the world that's in combination, that they're in unison have together to come against the church? Put on the armor of God that we put on the breastplate of righteousness. Live righteous. Don't live unrighteous. Don't go by the ways of the world. Don't let the world tug at us and pull us out there into it to have a part of it. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness, having our loins girt with the truth. You want reproduction to take place. Brother, listen, today you've got to give them the truth and then children will be born into the kingdom. Having that helmet of salvation, taking the shield of faith, having our feet shod, putting on those shoes of the gospel of peace, that this and that day it will help us to wait upon the Lord to have the patience and you'll have peace as long as we're walking with God, having our feet shod with the preparation of the, the peace and taking the sword of the Spirit, this word of God, this power of God, and we take this sword knowing that it is the most grandest weapon that we have upon this earth. Now listen, nations may have great weapons that can come against individuals and come against great armies, but brother, we're fighting one of the biggest armies uh, that's out there, listen today, listen, that comes against the church, but he said our weapon, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're in a battle, and we've been in a battle from the beginning, and here we are, and it will get fierce and worse. And brother, listen today, and let us not have their blood upon our hands, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Let's not think we can fight this warfare by weapons of this world. But our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds through Christ Jesus our Lord. So we, we wrestle, listen, against these powers and principalities and all of these things, but how we need to come against them is by the Word of God, how we stand. And he said, when we've done all we can do to stand, he said, stand therefore, having on the whole armor of God putting it on. And brother, you're ready for battle. How do you get dressed up for battle? Yes, you do it by this Word of God and that Holy Spirit when we've learned those things. And brother, we've got it settled by the Holy Ghost. We're more equipped. We know we're for sure and we can stand sure upon that rock and know that Jesus Christ said, I'll fight the battles for you. All you got to do is give them the Word. Will they accept it? Many will not. What are we to do? Still pray for them. Let God take care of them. As he said that, listen today, that when Satan and Michael the archangel, when they wrestled well, about the body of Moses, he said it does not bring against him a railing accusation, but he said, let, he said God re rebuke thee. Learn it over to God. God will take care. Because God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Turn it over into the hands of God. And brother, he said, by honor. He said, honor and dishonor. So those, let's go back up just a minute. For those on the right hand and those that are on the left. I want to be on the right hand of God, don't you? Because listen, today Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. And brother, listen today, when all this life is over, when it's for us as individuals, I want to be on the right hand of God. I want to be with Jesus Christ. I want to be there to listen today that when I stand before Him, when this life's heartbeat beats I, and the life's thought of this old natural brain ceases, I want to stand before Jesus Christ and to hear Him say to the Father, He's one of ours. I want him to hear you say that he's trusted in the blood that I shed upon the cross and his sins is covered and you can stand before God and hear him say, well done thy good and faithful servant enter in. If you're on the left, if you're counted with the goats, I'd rather listen today in the off cast, you're still a child of God, but he'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You chose not to follow after the direction 
But listen today, in those things on the right hand, we need to have righteousness, brother, for those that are with us, but we also need to have righteousness for those that are against us. Those listen today, no matter what it is, you can't let up on righteousness, no matter if they'll listen today. The right hand over here says, yeah, I'll prove of it, but the left hand over here says, now stand on the Word of God, and you'll always be right. right. Stand on the Word of God, and you'll always be right. Be led by the Spirit of God, and you'll be right. By honor and dishonor, what will they come against you? Why, sure, some will say, why have they have great honor? We honor them in our church. We do this and we do There's great honor and they, that God loves them and so on like that. But some will look and say, they're not of God. Well, they even looked at Jesus Christ and looked and said, you got dishonor, you're bells above. So we stand there. Jesus came knowing that he come to do the Father's will. No matter how much they called him bells above, he still looked at him off the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So he said, by honor and dishonor, by evil report. Some will say, oh, you, you know what he's a preaching? You know what he's a teaching? And they won't like him. Some won't like what you're saying. So by listen today, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report. Huh? As deceivers, why well, he's up there this or you're up there doing that and you're deceiving them. By, they'll say, he's a deceiver. Huh? As deceivers and yet true. God knows what it is. And God said, if I be for you, who can be against you? Huh? So as unknown, so as I know now, who do, do we want people to know all about us? Or do we want to know about Jesus Christ? Is it our fame that we're worried about, and our fortune, our names and lights? Or do we want to put it up there as Jesus Christ? See, we have to look and sort those things out. Listen today that the flesh doesn't override in our spirit. And there's that warfare and then that battle that is there. That as long as Jesus Christ is lifted up, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So if we be an instrument that God can use to draw people that listen today, that makes us a stronger church, makes us a stronger assembly, that binds us up together, that we come in one mind and one accord, believing ye upon the self same thing. They'll say, well, one over here says it's this way and one's that way. They don't know what they're talking. Let's come together. And brother, listen today. I'll just think about it. And they'll accuse us. And sometimes they'll accuse us together by honor and dishonor, by evil report, good report as deceivers. But yet you know what is truth. How do you know what is truth? How do we know which one? Brother, listen today. When a preacher or teacher comes to us, our brother or somebody out here has come to witness to us or to testify before us. How do we know what is true? He said, you shall know the truth. And how do you know that truth? We better have the Spirit of God. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You know that you're free. Listen today. And God said, whom I've made free, you're free indeed. You're at liberty with Jesus Christ to walk with the Spirit of God. Otherwise, brother, you're walking on your own accord. Unless we ask of God, is this right? What I'm going to do? I'd rather listen today, especially in some drastic measures. Is this what God wants me to do? Or does he say, stay away? And I'm sure the same in your life. There's been many a times and decisions in my life that some things that are as the old saying goes or something, you want it so bad you could taste it. Uh, but you're sure glad God didn't let you taste of it. You're glad that you made a different decision and you're thankful that, listen, today you stayed away from it even though it was there. And brother, you thought it was going to be the best for yourself and maybe for others, but still yet you're glad, listen, today that you listen to the Spirit of God and you be led just like old Paul said, I would have went down to Macedonia, but listen, today the Spirit said, no, you're to go a different direction. And brother Paul come out for the better and all the people come out for the better when they listen, he listened to the Spirit of God. Do we know the voice of God? Do we know when God is speaking to us and talking to us? So as unknown and yet well known, who's the one that you want to know? The, the no man he already does. But who can what know what you're doing? As unknown. 
but well known. Uh, because some will look at you and say, wouldn't hear him at all. Some say, love to. Love to hear him sing. Love to hear him pray. Love to hear him preach. Love to hear the testimony. Whatever it might be of us as individuals, this way or that. But listen today, who are we to please? We're to be pleasing unto God. And listen today, if we're pleasing unto God, God will make us pleased unto him and among men. God, listen today, that we will show forth that we are a child of God. Uh, wherever we go as our sister sung the song and the whole wide world will see all of this turmoil that we go through but yet we kept patience we kept honor we kept loyalty to God we did not deny just as old Job was there when he was under his test brother listen today there would be many even his own wife that was there even the whole church may look at you and say curse God and die Will you speak as a foolish woman? Uh, because he had a testimony, he had an integrity, and he stood his ground that he would rather walk with God, talk with God, be in fellowship with God than anything else because the Job said, I'll stand before God for myself and not another. So sometimes it's known, and listen today, unknown and yet well known as dying. But listen today, Paul said that in the, through him he said that yet I die daily. Listen today, but in Christ Jesus we continue to live eternally. Why? Because we're in that day that we found that day and we continue in that day because it is eternity. And Jesus is that day star. He's that and if we continue with him, we will never die. But this old flesh, it's got to die daily. He said it's unknown yet well known as dying. And some people look at you in that dying some people may look at James Moore and say, man, you're dead. Huh? Because you don't run out here. You don't do the exciting things the rest of the world does. You're not involved in all the right of the world. And I'm so glad. If you want to count me as dead to that, thank you because I want to be dead to the world and alive in Christ Jesus. I want my sins under the blood and I don't have to have the world. You can have the world. You're welcome to it. But just give me Jesus. I want to make it to heaven no matter where anybody else does or not. I want to make it there. I know time is drawing short for all of us. And our goal should be pressing forward to the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Let us do what we can do, what time is left here that God has allotted us, and let's declare the acceptable year of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ. Let us listen, declare that He is the day, and that Jesus Christ is the only way into the kingdom of God. Will some be mad at you, and some declare you as dead, how that they won't associate with you. You're as a dead body to them. But listen, today I'd rather be dead to the world than alive in Jesus. So counting you as dying, and behold, we live. Listen, you're only alive today in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you're dead in trespasses and sin. You want to know whether somebody's alive or dead or not? Just take a look and see how they believe in God. And Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I'll come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you may be also. If we're not trusting that this and God set a time for this old world to end. Just sit and think about it. You could have been in Abraham's time. You could have been in Noah's time. You could have been in the time of Daniel. Nehemiah and Ezra. But you're here. You're in this lifetime. Just as much as important as Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah and the prophets of old were for their time. And there's a purpose for us to be here. And it's the same person. purpose is to declare Jesus Christ that He is the Son of God. And unless we believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, we will die in our sin. And where He is, we cannot come. Because Jesus said, unless you believe I am He, you will die in your sin. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say if. And you've been pretty good, you won't. He said, unless you believe I am He. And if we don't believe this old world's are coming to an end, you're, being, you're deceiving yourself and you're deceiving others 
by trying to talk people in. I brother said this world is not coming to an end because it is. Time is drawn short. It's not getting longer. It's coming to an end. And be prepared to meet our God. Uh, so people call you dead. But yet we said, and behold, we live as chastened and not killed. Uh, why? Because Brother Anthony, when we do wrong, he said to chase them. I've done wrong, oh, you've yeah. done wrong, oh, and I can say everybody in here has done wrong. But listen to that. When we're chastened of God, our brother, he chastened us like a father, helping us wanting to grow and to move away from those things. I listen to that. When God comes with a spiritual switch, I have to take care of you just as your earthly father. I took care of you and loved you. The heavenly father loves you even more. He's talking about he's a spirit and he wants us to be able to live pure and that he's a chaste life. Our brother listen today to correct us. And brother, for a moment, it seems grievous. It seems hard. But all the rejoicing when we accept it and realize we're the one that's wrong and God is right. That he's wanting to lead us in a path of righteousness, of truth, to help us as chastened and not kill. Huh? That all this in the day helps us. <coughs> but all this as we talk maybe in Bible study, somewhere along the line, listen today, God does not pull out in the bleeding Deuteronomy 32. God does not pull out his glittering sword. He does not brandish it. If he pulls it out, brother, it's going to execute judgment. And brother, listen today, God is willing to help us that it not be pulled out. And he's trying to help this whole world. And he's been trying to help this world from the time he formed it. But he has also established a time when he will judge this world by that man in righteousness. By that man. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and so when he pulls it out, judgment's going to fall. And so, listen, but he chastised them. We're not killed. Uh, though this world may want to destroy you, and this world may destroy you, and I, the way that it looks like things are getting, they will not allow preaching like this or for things to listen to more and more. And you say, oh, that's a long way off, brother. You'll wake up one morning pretty soon, and you'll find out, brother, you'll be persecuted more than you've ever been persecuted. Uh, it's liable to happen. It's a coming quick. And oh, he said, and yet not kill. Because why? They may kill and destroy this body, but they cannot touch the soul. Cannot touch the soul. All right. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. All right, then it, we shed many a tears over things that happens in our families and happens to us in personal life. And brother, we weep as old Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He wept for those people. We weep for our children, for our grandchildren, for our neighbors, and for all the perverseness that's going on in this world. And we weep and we wonder why would they not listen to the word of God? But listen today, we're sorrowful. Brother, listen today, and we weep and we cry for our people. But he said, listen today, that heartache and sorrows through the night but joy cometh in order. Uh, we'll weep for him. And we'll cry. And it's sorrowful and it's grievous and it's hard sometimes to go some of these through these days. Uh, hey, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing. We know that whatever the judgment of God, whatever the way that God will, it's always righteous and truth. And this world cannot understand it. We look into you know, some of them and say, well, how come all these little children, they're abused? I mean, listen that day, much and, you know, horrifically. And we wonder, why don't God just send the lightning bolt and strike them down? But God's going to take care. God loves them just as he loves that little baby that they're abusing. But reckoning day is coming and it's hard for the world to understand Brother, listen today that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe on Him, He said, whosoever would believe on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. But if we stay in that condition, unless we repent, He said, we'll all likewise perish. That God will bring in the vengeance and the judgment down. And there is a place that we go too far. 
There is a place that we move away that we, listen today, enjoy not having God, don't want anything with God. I heard somebody say the other day that they was uh, counseling some person that was on drugs and they was trying to get them to go to change their life and they knew about church and all that and they say, I know all of that and I don't want it. I want the drugs. I want it. I love it and I want it. When we our minds get so far away and our hearts get so far away with us that we love to stay in our sins. We love darkness. The Word of God has the answer for us. We love darkness rather than light. Lest we would come to the light and our deeds should be reproved. You know, some people are so stubborn they won't come to the light. Mm -hmm. Even listen to that. It's sort of like this now. I've never been in a coal mine very deep. I've been very little far in that type of darkness here upon this earth. And some of you may have been way back in there. They say if you turn out the light, you can't see nothing. Nothing. Huh? Or oh, if it was somewhere way down the line somebody had a little light and you wouldn't go to it just to help get yourself out, huh? you'd be a lunatic. Mm -hmm. And I believe I'll find my own way out of here. That's the way we are. We're stubborn. We don't want the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I might have to change some things. might have to change my attitude. I might have to change the way that I think about God. But He's like in that darkness that we're setting way off. He said we sit in darkness, but we've seen a marvelous light. And that light is out there and God's given us direction how to get out of that darkness. And we feel, if we refuse that light, one day God's going to turn off that light. It's going to be out there in heaven all the time. It's still there. But to the darkness of the world, it's cast into outer darkness. You no longer can see it no more. Separated from God. But you'll be glad you come to the light. It's sorrowful yet always rejoicing. It's poor yet making many rich. How can you get rich? Well, we've got the, the, the Father. Our Father, as David said, owns the cattle of a thousand hills. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even ask you. <laughs> and so he has it all. This belongs to God. Whether you live or whether you die, you're the Lord's. Whether you want to obey Him, whether you want to come to the light or not, we're still the Lord's. We're still His. Okay? So he said, in these things making me, how can we make you rich? If I offer you something today that will make you super rich, will you take it? Well, if it's in the natural, in the carnal, as it's been said over and over, if somebody wrote you out a check and said, here's you a billion dollars laying here, and you didn't come and get it, you're crazy. In the car. But yet we're offering you something that you can have everything. And it costs somebody something. It costs God his son, his life that he paid it, that you can have everything. How can you tell me that I'm going to get everything, preacher? He said, he that overcometh shall be in hurry all things. And I shall be their God and they shall be my son. So you've got it all. You're like our workers with Jesus Christ. And listen today, you'll be with the Son, you'll be with the Father. You've got it all. People are separating, wanting to have more. Stay, still looking at it carnally. I want that billion here, and I've got more than you all. Ha uh ha. -huh. Huh? Want to be that Gentile. Wants the Lord over top of it. Have more. People in carnally want to go to heaven and have more and rule of more. Brother, listen today. We have but one king over us. Right. And his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, he's the Lord of lords and the king of kings. And he owns it all. And he's, he's willing to give it up. Yet we can make you rich. Uh, by the word of God, we can make many rich by giving them the word of God. And they'll refuse it. Don't want it. They're still looking for the carnal. They're still looking for something even out in the eternal that they can get rich and have more than somebody else when God has said He is no respecter of persons. What He's given to one, He'll give to everybody. Yep. He loves us all. As sorrowful, making many rich, as having nothing. Uh, how, because is there anything that's here that will hold you here? Then you got nothing. You got nothing. Nothing for this flesh and this carnality and your soul and your spirit to hold on to here. 
because your treasure, he said, lay up your treasures over in heaven where the thief, the moth, and so that they can't creep in and eat it up and steal it and destroy it. But lay your treasures up in heaven. Don't lay them up here on earth. Lay them up over there in heaven. Where God, as Paul said, I, I'm persuaded that all that I have, God is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him. He's able. If you'll commit yourself, don't let you deny yourself. Listen to the things of this world. I'm not saying you got to you know, go off in a cave somewhere and become a hermit. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about if there's anything you're holding on to that would keep you out of heaven, you better turn it loose. You better get rid of it. Uh, and so we tell the world same thing. We tell the world to turn it loose. Give, turn loose of this world. It's be the separated people. As saw he had always rejoicing his poor yet making many riches having nothing and yet possessing all things. Same thing. We possess it by Jesus Christ. So, O oh, ye Corinthians, their mouth is open unto you and their heart is enlarged. We look and we see that that our, we, we we want people, we want our churches, we want our assemblies, our congregation, we want people to come rejoicing in Jesus Christ and proclaim Jesus to be the way, the truth, and the life, and that the church stand for Jesus Christ. If we're standing for other things, listen today, it's outside of Christ, it is sin. You're not straightening us, but you're straightening your own mouth. Huh? You're not restricted. If you're restricted, it's because of your own self. If you're letting back on something that the Holy Spirit, well, I need, I need some, you know, this and that. And well, yeah, God has placed some here in a mix of much or, or midst in other places around the world that to listen today, some teachers and preachers and pastors and, and the evangelists and so to help us to edify the saints and their place there for it, that we can learn and we can grow. But we've got to attach and know and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to grow upon it. As we said in Bible study too, when we lay a, a block or a brick, you got to learn what that brick is. If you don't, there's no need to go any further. There's no need to proceed any further because you've got to build upon that. When we learn that, we can move on and he'll keep adding more and more to it and you keep learning. It's called, you know, even the world says building blocks of knowledge and all that. Even in secular world, when we learn, there's no need for you to go on. Listen, we don't know what two plus two is. There's no need to go on. You've got to learn what that is to be able to do math, to multiply, divide, subtract. you got to know if you don't know that, it's pretty hard to proceed any further. And the reason why this world can't come to Jesus Christ is because they issue out those things and want to remain in darkness and they can proceed no further until they come and realize that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. That He's over everything. No matter what rumor it is, over what nation, He is above it all. And we'll all answer to Jesus Christ. We'll all give an answer. Of the deeds done in the body. In the body of Christ. We'll give all give an answer of the deeds done in the body. Whether it be good. Or whether it be bad. Or good or evil. For now a recompense. What you give, give back. A recompense. What you get back or give back. In the same. I speak as unto my children. Be also enlarged. You'll receive back. When we love in God, we'll receive that love back from one another. And we'll be recompensed for it. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. There's a place of separation. You say, but they're my family. There's a place of separation. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Who's the unbeliever? Anybody that does not believe in Jesus Christ is antichrist. I don't care what religion it is. I don't care what fellowship it is. I don't care what kinship it is. It is against Christ that does not believe in Jesus Christ. Be not unequally yoked together with the unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? So anything outside of Christ is unrighteous. It's sin. So what fellowship do we have of them? With the unrighteous. What fellowship with righteousness with the unrighteous? And what communion hath light with darkness? 
So what and what concord? What harmony? How are we in agreement? What concord hath Christ with Belial? What agreement is there? There is a separation, brother. There is a line drawn. Either we're in the body of Christ or we're in the body of death. And Apostle Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Listen today, if we're in it, no matter where we're at, no matter what's over the door, if we're in Jesus Christ, we're walking after the Spirit of God, and there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. If we're walking, we'll be walking in the same way. So what, and what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Those that are against Christ and does not want it at all. All right? So let's, let's look at just a minute. Let's turn over to the book of Colossians. And we'll be right back just in a minute. <coughs> Colossians 2, verse 8. And what are we as a church? What are we got to be? He's telling them here, the church of Colossae, he's telling them something to be aware of. Just the same as he told the church of Corinth. Just as he told the church of Galatia. Just as he told, told the church of Rome. And all the, but there's something there in verse 8 too. Colossians 2 and 8, he said, beware. We got to be on guard. That's why you got that whole armor of God on. That's why you've got the breastplate of righteousness. You loins girded with the truth. You've got the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You've got the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And he said, while you're standing there, beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Guess what happened in the beginning? The most subtle beast of the field, those that was against Christ, came to the church and said, you know God has said that in the day thou eat thereof thou shalt not surely die. Philosophy. Doctrine. So beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. After them own selves. Huh? The doctrines of men. The traditions of our fathers. The liar that was from the beginning. That old devil, that old flesh, those things, the most subtle beast that was from the beginning that told the wrong thing that God listened today into trouble that caused death to come. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's in Jesus Christ. He is over these things. God is over Christ. Christ is over man. And man is over woman, but God is over it all. And so listen today. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in Him. When we're in Jesus Christ, we're in the body of Christ, no matter where in, in it where He has set us, I don't care if you're the hand, the foot, brother, listen, the eyeball, the ear, the nose, we all need to work together, brother. we got to be able to see when trouble's coming, and we got to hear it. You might hear it before you can see it, and you might see it before you can hear it, but listen today, and we all got to look at it. And he said, taste of me and see if I'm good. And brother, you will look at it and you will, when somebody comes with a doctrine and wants you to eat of the word, wants to eat that bread they're putting out, you find out where it's tainted or not. Whether it's good or bad. So in whom, he said, and you are completed in which is the head of, the, which is the head of all principality and power. Who did God, the, the Father, give all power upon this earth? He said he gave unto him all power both in heaven and earth. And Jesus said he thought it not robbery that he make himself equal with God because he was God the Son. And so listen today. All these things that you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. It's circumcision of the heart. When he has separated us, we're separated from the world and we've come out from among that world to be that separated people and we're in that body and we're looking and we, listen today, have got clear eyes and we've got clear vision. And brother, listen today, and we handle the word of God not deceitfully, but we put it out there, listen today, as the truth that it's Jesus Christ, him to be the way, the truth, and the life. And brother, listen, and we'll know what is truth and what is error because we have grown and we've got off the path of, we've got off, listen today, those things off the mill, and we've become elders in the church, and we know the difference between good and evil. Then we're growing and we're moving and we know the difference between. 
and we're able to discern it and to know when somebody hands you out a bad piece of bread or something to be able to eat, you'll know the difference of it and say, I'm not I'm going to reject it. And you say, But oh, they're well known. Huh? But they're well known. In whom you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of what? Of the flesh. By the circumcision of Christ. You've had your heart purified. You're living in righteousness. God's a speaking to the heart. God's a talking to your soul. And he's leading us. And telling us what to do and what not to do. And sometimes it takes, if you're like me, it takes some of us sometimes, we need some help. <laughs> we need a good helper. We need each other that's here. And God knows we know what we all are in the flesh, but God knows that we need to help one another while we're here to make it in. And listen today that we all stay in tune and looking towards Jesus Christ, buried with Him in baptism, uh, washed with the regeneration of the Word of God when we're baptized. In, in, into those things, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith and the operation of God. What God set out from the beginning. God has not changed anything. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he changeth not. When people come along and say, God has changed this and changed that, and now we're going to do this and we're going to do that, and brother, listen, today you can know and rest assured it does not come from God. And so listen today, so that you're risen through the faith in the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. He told all the way from the beginning, he said, that the seventh from Adam, Enoch, said the Lord shall return. You want to know how long God's been working this thing to the end? That he said in Isaiah, he said he knew the end from the beginning. But he said the seventh from Adam, Enoch, prophesied and said the Lord shall return with ten thousands of his saints. God gave us, a, and we can look back and see, well, we know that's true because he did it by faith and he knew and he looked way down and at the end, maybe beyond us a few days or a few years, but then he knew that the Lord would return with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all that are ungodly. The wrath of God is upon the children of the disobedient. <clears throat> And so with him through the faith and operation of God who has raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins. People said you're dead. Remember over here? They're looking at you and say, man, you're dead because you don't run with the right of the world. You don't go with the things what the rest of the world. You're separated. They look at you where they'll say, well, you're, you know, some of the old saying, well, you're squire. You're this and you're that. That's all right. Brother, they'll look at you and say you're dead. You're to thank them because you are that you won't go do the same things that they're doing. Because they look at you and say, but you're different. And I wouldn't want that. Well, that's up to them whether they want it or not. But you live a separated life. You live the way God wants us to live. Holy and righteous unto Him. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcised of your flesh. Have to quicken together with Him. Having given you all trespasses. Forgiven you all trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled the principalities and powers, he had he made a show of them openly triumphing over, over them in it. So he triumphed over that he withstood. He you want to know he was flesh. If you slapped him, he'd feel the slap. You pulled his hair, he'd know it. You cut him, he bled. He was full man and full God. That's hard for the world to understand that yet God came here. His word, the word was made flesh and dwelled among men. He came here and suffered and died in his short time here. But all the impact that he had that for you and I for today that he give us a right to the tree of life that is in the midst of the paradise of God. For he said in Revelation 2 and 7, he said, He that overcometh will I grant him to eat of the tree of life that is in the midst of the paradise of God. And what's guarding it is a flaming sword that you can't come into it unless you come by the word of God. That sword, which is the word of God. Sharper than any two-edged swords because there's other swords out there. 
But it's sharper than any two-edged sword, cut and divide the center of the soul and the spirit. He gets down to where we're living at, cut the very joints and marrow of our bone. He gets down to the lifeline. He gets down to where we're living and our substance, what we have that is there. And so let's go back into these things. And he said, and what, and what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. What we are, he said, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. If we're joined together in the body of Christ and we're believing and we're seeing and we're handling and we're tasting and we're hearing and we're smelling and we're trying to find out what is good and what is not and we're trying to come to the place of the servant and we're looking and we're coming in unison and brother, that body can walk together. He said, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? How can you walk with Jesus Christ unless you agree with him? If you don't agree with Jesus Christ that Jesus said, I'm coming again. When do you want him to come? I'll ask us all personal the question. When do you want him to come? Huh? Did the word of God not say that we would cry out, oh, even so come Lord Jesus? Why would we want as a church? Why would we? Because we see the wickedness everywhere. It's growing up and it just keeps festering and growing. We say, well, I want to wait. I want to enjoy life. I want to be like you. Well, I'm just 63 years old. And buddy, I tell you what, it'll go pretty quick. Mm -hmm. huh? I want to be 120. Well, so would everybody else. Good point. <laughs> huh? But what about living eternally? Why? I don't know. Isaac said this one time. My son there, he said, why would we want to live here with all the stuff that's going on? Yeah. If it gets any, the perverseness gets any worse, why would we want to be here? Why would we? <laughs> why would we not just want to go on? So in what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. The more and more we see the infiltration into trying to come into the body of Christ and God won't allow it, it will never come in. I'm going to tell you, we can adopt a whole lot of things no matter whether it's this, this assembly or assemblies up the road, down the road, across the hill, over in the valley. People can adopt a whole lot of things of this world and they can say we've got a church but it will not come into the true church. It's holy. It will not come into it. God will call an end to it before it will. Ain't no way. It cannot come into the body of Christ. God will not receive sin. It cannot have it come in. We may say in our assemblies we've accepted it, but God will never accept it. it, it he won't adopt it in. Huh? As God, for if you are the temple of God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Where have we heard that? Over in Revelation 21 and 7. When we separate and we believe, he said he'll be our God. We'll inherit all things. And so how does he want us to be? I'm going to turn here and read just a minute, just a little bit here, two or three verses out of 1 Timothy chapter, 14, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 14, 15. Says, and these things right unto you, this is Paul telling young Timothy, unto you the hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I turn long, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God. He's talking about us being the temple of God. How should we personally, and then we as a group, how are we to be in the temple of God? How that we should behave ourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. That's why I listen today, the worlds are getting worse. They have looked at some assemblies and we have adopted things from the world and God says it should not be and he wants us to root it out and keep it out of our personal lives and keep it out of our assembly. And Paul told Timothy, this is how you keep it out of the temple of God and how we should behave ourselves in the temple, which is the ground and the pillar of the truth that should be drawing everybody to come mm -hmm. into the assembly to be saved. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Huh? People look at you and say, why? why won't you run with the right of the world? What's in that? They can't understand why that you would come and worship God, why you would study God's word, why we would separate ourselves from the world and we don't run with the rest of them. Why would you do it? Great, without controversy, great is the mystery of Godless. 
God was manifest in the flesh. He was made plain. He was the Son of God. He did things to show He was the Son of God. He was without sin. He walked and He uh, He didn't raise His voice in the streets. He did not come against uh, the world, all that stuff. He just offered it up freely. Here I am. I'm the Son. And people recognized who He was and they believed. But a lot rejected. Justified in the Spirit. He came in the Spirit. The, that spirit came and lit upon him as in the form of a dove and the voice of God spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, those that handle this word of God and pass it on one from one place to another and from one time and one generation and brother those things and pass it on down the line because we're all in the generation of Jesus Christ. And they handle the truth and send it right on down. Seen of angels, and they knew that was the truth. They knew that he, and then you know, Peter, there was, Christ asked Peter, said, Peter, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Thou art to Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, revealed it to you. And he said, Peter, thou art to rock, and upon this church, I, upon this rock, I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against. So preached into the preached to the Gentiles, those that, uh, of us that were outcast and so on out that was wanted to be dominant and still want to be dominant, but he was preached that we might be able to come believed on in the world and received up in glory. He went back. So his word continues on. It was before us, it is with us, and it will be right on after us, whatever time it might be. But it, you, this word is forever settling in the heavens. Let's finish this thing out. What did he tell us then? How we ought to behave ourselves? And he said, Wherefore, come out from among them. You're wondering whether we should be allies <coughs> with them? He said, No. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Remember us studying, Sister Kathy brought out a few Bible studies back, that not only did he say, thou, In the day thou eat thereof, thou shalt not surely die, but there's something else in there that you're not even to touch it. You're not even to touch it. Our problem is that sometimes we're touching it and eating it too or we're just touching it. We're, we're condoning certain things that it to be okay. What we need to have people look at is how we live in our lives. And that's the greatest testimony. That's the greatest epistle anybody could have. Your epistles are living among all. How you live your life is as much as if somebody would have come here this morning in church I've heard this message. How your neighbors and your family, how you're living your life, and sometimes it's some short answers. You want to go down here? No, I don't. Why don't you? Because it's in the world and I'm not going. That's all you have to say. Why? Because it brings under condemnation because what you're doing is separating and you're saying of the truth. I'm not going to run to the right of the world. You don't have to go sometimes in great explanation. You just tell what is truth. And you know what God would not want you to do and so therefore you don't do it and when you're asked to go you say I won't do it. So wherefore come out from among them be ye separate saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Why would you want to run with the infidel? Why would you want to go with Belial? Why would you want to go with the unbelievers? Those that do not know of Christ why would we want to run with them? Because there's a little, if we want to, there's a little bit of that drawing that's there. Wanting us to, you know, for the good times we used to have. He said, don't take hold of the plow and look back. He said, if we take hold of the plow and look back, we're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. So take hold of it and look back. Uh, and I, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. He said, I will receive you. And he'll be a father. I will be a father unto you. He will guide you. He will chastise you when, when you when you do it. And rest sure, just go, you know, if you start stepping over to the wrong, you go to the right or left. He's going to say, nope, you got to go straight as the gate, and there's the way that leads unto life everlasting. And we we receive that chastisement, we'll be better off for it. And we'll be workers with him. And we'll be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Ain't you glad of that? He's given us away. To make it in. He gave us instruction how that we should how to control ourselves. How that we should limit ourselves. And how that we because that Holy Spirit and the leadership and the guidance of that Holy Spirit 
to tell us where, where to go. If it was just left up to us, we'd all, all go our own little ways, and we'd all be just like we all was before. We all went, went to everything, just whatever. As an old saying is, if it felt good, we'd do it. Mm -hmm. That's what we'd be. If you say we're, we're our own God and, they, and we're our own judge and, and whatever I say is good, is good. That's the problem with the world. That's what they think. It's what their way. Instead of looking towards God through Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, instead of looking to him, we have shunned the faith. We've walked away from the faith. We've moved away. We've fallen from grace. And we don't want to follow God through Jesus Christ because we've got to give up what the flesh wants to do. We got to listen to God and we have to change our ways. It's called repentance. It's called repentance. Godly sorrow is the only thing that will work working. Repentance. A godly sorrow. Not having a fake love. But we want God, and this is something we all individually do we want God? more than anything else in this world whether it be powers or principalities things above in the earth or beneath the earth do we want God above anything else that would come in our lives do we want God and you cannot have God without Jesus Christ so do we want him or do we want to just stay the way that we are and hope we make it into heaven that's a question we all and if we want God more than anything then give him thanks and give him glory and give him thanks for the direction and the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the satisfaction knowing that you've got it all settled and you settled long ago. Uh, where at? Down on your knees. You settled it all. You got it fixed up. May God bless you today. Amen.